Okay, so we think we figured out what happened with Boone and how he got out. So I just wanted to show that to you. So we had Boone out here playing. Um, if you notice, we made some changes to the fence. So previously, we had this tin around the top edge of the, the fence. Uh, this created two problems. Number one problem was that it didn't last. That worked for maybe a year or so. And the wind blowing, obviously this is solid, so it catches in the wind, and it create, it made it, uh, over time, slowly wear out. And it ripped this tin where we would attach it to the wire, it ripped off. And so that only took about a year to happen. So it wasn't a good design at all if it only lasted, you know, a little over a year. So what we did was we changed from this design to these pipes. And the idea is the mink climbs up the fence, tries to jump over it, but he can't get a hold of anything. And if he jumps, he's got to kind of come out and above. The problem is there was a weakness to the plan. Once the mink gets up on top of here, unlike the tin, they can walk along the top of this once they get on top. So what we think happened was we found a gap right here where the mink could have climbed up the wire and gone inside the pipe. And then from there, travel inside the pipe until they get to the end where they can then come out, stand on the top of the fence, and jump over. And I'm pretty confident that's how Boone got out. So, I got thinking about it, you know, we've had this, this fence, this so-called mink proof, and never lost a mink for four years. Um, got me thinking though, you know, mink are just so good at escaping. They are absolute escape artists. And this just goes to show, I mean, you could go four years without a problem and then change one thing and they find a way out. So my thought is, rather than just focusing on making this mink proof, we should also have a contingency plan for when they eventually get out. And that is to have them captured the minute they escape. So across the back of our property and all of our neighbors' properties, there's an irrigation pipe. Um, for us, it's a below the ground pipe. For other neighbors, it's an above the ground ditch. So if you see along here, this is all a buried ir irrigation pipe. And it goes across our yard, through their yard, and all the way down the street through people's backyards. What you see here, this is the neighbor's yard. They have an open ditch. Several neighbors have open ditches. A lot of them have pipes like us. And the mink are gonna be very attracted to this corridor because of the pipe. And they're likely to go down these ditches and just travel from yard to yard. So I figure, let's turn lemons into lemonade. So this is a bit of a problem, right? This pipe gives the mink a very easy corridor to just travel very far, very quickly, and get as far away from our house as possible and possibly get into mischief along the way. But why not turn that lemon into lemonade by using it to capture the mink if they do escape? This is the first place they're likely to go when they get out, and then they're gonna run it until they decide to come out. So what we're gonna be doing from now on is I purchased some traps that fit perfectly into those pipes so that nothing can go around the trap. They have to go through the trap. It'll be a double door trap, and we'll just leave them permanently set. So anything coming through there gets captured. If by chance, a year from now, or two years from now, or five years from now, we lose a mink, it'll get caught. So I'm hoping with that contingency plan, having those traps always set, we'll be able to someday prevent a future loss of a future mink. Uh, the thing is with mink, it's pretty much impossible to 100% avoid losing them. That's just the fact of life. I don't know anyone who's had mink for very long that hasn't lost one at some point. It doesn't matter where you keep them, what kind of cages you have them in, whether they're a pet that stays locked in the house, or whether they're a hunting animal like mine that get out. It, the, the reality is, you can have them very long, you're gonna eventually lose one. I've had a few people asking uh, what mink we have and they want to see an update of the different mink and where they're at and things like that. So this first enclosure here, this is little Mr. Saber. And Saber is coming up on four years old, I believe. He is a uh, son of Brock. And uh, Brock and Rio. These are the enclosures. 
Each enclosure is a little different. This is the most unique of all the enclosures because it's the only one where we have a natural uh, hollow for the den. Saber has this cool little den and uh, I put sawdust down in there and change it from time to time so it stays nice and soft and dry. He's gonna come up and show us how it works. And um, patch on the butt. <laughs> Let me move out of here. Good job, Saber. And you see he can climb around up here and it's great exercise and enrichment rather than just having a flat cage. I feel like he's gonna jump on me. <laughs> yeah, me too. That's why I backed up. Whoa, 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 back up. <laughs> he's thinking of climbing up on us. So it's pretty cool. And then you see he's got the pipes he can run around through. And then he's got his little swimming pool <clears throat> that he could swim in. This time of year, we don't keep it very deep uh, because it just freezes up. So we don't want it to become a giant frozen block of ice. So we only fill it part of the way. In the summer, we fill it up to the top. This is Butcher Boy in his enclosure. So this is how all the enclosures typically are. They've got a little tree to climb leading up to an elevated den. And the purpose behind that is to give them more enrichment, more exercise, and I mean, it's dry up there. They're, <laughs> they're not gonna you know, go swimming and then get back in the den and get it wet. But it's really not so much of a practical reason as it's more just for the enrichment of the mink. So they get to climb back up and down, back and forth. This little girl's named Honey Badger. Her dad is Spot and her mom is Rio. And she was born this spring. She was the only kit in her litter. So it wasn't even a litter, it's just a little single, single baby. It's the first time I've had a female give birth to just one baby. The reason we call her Honey Badger is when she first started growing hair, she was a really funny color. She kind of looked like the color of a honey badger. And then for some reason it just went, grew out the same way any other mink looks. We'll just let him out. So this is Mr. Crockett, Boone's brother. And he thinks he's gonna go find a rat or something interesting. So he's taking off on us. I'll go grab a piece of meat and call him to come back. Is there a rat over there? No. <laughs> Crockett, come on. Crockett, come on. Crockett, there you go. Okay, so here's Houdini. <laughs> Mr. Houdini. Okay, stay in here. Okay, let me out. <clears throat> Rio. Oh yeah, Rio, that you can see her better. Because her eyes are just so freaking black. Yeah. <laughs> Rio! So here's Rio. She's bouncing all over the place. Rio! Her little Miss Rio. <laughs> over here. And then I want to see if I can... Yeah, <laughs> she's just... Okay. Vila. Come on. Vila. There she is. So this is little Miss Vila. <laughs> and then they look so cute in their winter coats. And then this is little Miss Ikisabe. <clears throat> She's the meanest mink I have by far. She will eat you any chance she gets. And this is the, what I call the horde. This is all the young mink. They were born <clears throat> this spring, except for um, uh, honey badger. And the reason she isn't in with them is because she's a month younger. These guys were born really early and she was born really late and so we couldn't put them together because it would have been dangerous for the younger one. So these are, um, all of them are females except for right here. This guy right here on, right here. 
And uh, he's the only one with a name. I've named him Sherlock because he's a very clever mink and uh, has a really cool personality. The other ones I haven't named yet, but these are all his sisters. And they're, uh, they're out of Vila and their father is Crockett. Um, I'm going to be putting some special effort and attention into uh, Mr. Sherlock here and see what he's like. Get him out hunting a bunch and see how good he is because I'm, I really like him. He's really quick, really athletic, and super smart. <clears throat> Isn't right. he the smallest mink, male mink you've had to? Oh, he's also the smallest male that I will have ever had the chance to hunt with. It'll be interesting to see what such a small male can do. So this is Spot in his enclosure. Come here, Mr. Spot. So this hood closure runs all the way along here. <laughs> what are you doing, you cute little guys? I'll snuggle up in your bed. Look at this girl working hard. So proud of this girl working so hard. We cleaned all of them. All of them. You did? You cleaned all of them, didn't you? You cleaned all the cages while Daddy worked on the cages. You cleaned them, huh? Uh -huh. You're such a hard worker. Oh, there's a little bit more. Oh, look, the poop. Mink just added some for you to clean. So I actually put one up, one bed up high and one bed down low because I had one bed there and one bed there and for some reason they were sleeping in one and pooping in the other and it was really gross. So <clears throat> mink are lazy when they want to go poop. They go as close to their bed as they can so they don't have to they get out of bed, go to the bathroom and go back. But um, so they ended up just climbing across that branch across and then going poop over there and then climbing back instead of climbing down. So and that there's six mink in here, so they can't fit in one bed very comfortably anyway. So I um, gave them one bed on the ground so that they wouldn't poop in it. Is she, she helping you clean, Olive? She's helping. She's Isn't she so cute? cute? I love this litter. They're such a nice, confident group of mink. Why is she going in there? She's like, what did you got here? She like pat her on the butt. Pat. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, did I startle you? But see, she's startled, then she's right back at it. She's not scared at all. You're so cute. Okay, are we all done? Looks like we're all done. Such a good job, Olive, cleaning all those cages. Are you cold? Should we go in and have some hot chocolate? Uh -huh. Okay, let's do it. So these are little ducks. And uh, this colorful one here, that's Mr. Ping, and he's, as I predicted, grown up to look just like any other wild male mallard. We have here some uh, some greens from Maggie's tank, and they love eating them, so we're going to go put them in their little pool so they could uh, eat these greens. You see they're trying to eat it through the plastic. I'm so happy that the plants that I grow go to good use. Yeah, they absolutely love it. That little tank just like <laughs> blooms. Yeah, so great.
<laughs> so basically, I figure, let's make lemons out of lemonade, right? That pipe is kind of an annoyance because it... Lemons out of lemonade? You Don't you mean make lemonade out of lemons? Lemons. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs>